GLD 2010 offers a comprehensive suite of geothermal design tools. We're now going to open an average block loads module and import an hourly loads profile. In this example, we're going to bring in an hourly loads profile that is heating and cooling data for 8,760 hours. We can now review the imported loads data. We can review it in multiple ways, including graphically. We can see in this case the heating and cooling loads are fairly well balanced. We can now return to the original view. Now we can select a heat pump. We'll first select a manufacturer from the range of manufacturers included in the program. Next, we'll choose a family and a specific pump from within the family. We're now done with the average block loads module and can proceed with our design. We're now opening a vertical borehole project. We are going to link the two modules so that they can communicate. Now we go to the fluids tab and we can enter our target entering fluid temperatures. We can automatically have the program enter fluid properties for us if we so desire. In this tab we can enter our ground temperature and our soil thermal properties. New in GLD 2010 is a weighted average thermal conductivity calculator. We'll set the modeling time for 10 years, a good starting point. In this tab, we specify the parameters of each borehole. We can define the pipe size, for example, or the grout conductivity. In this tab, we specify the borehole pattern. We can have a standard pattern or a non-standard pattern. We switch to the Results tab and hit Calculate to see the results of our Design Day Calculation, our fastest calculation methodology. We can now switch to our monthly simulation method to predict how the sloop field is going to perform month by month over a 10 year window. The numbers in purple indicate the results of our monthly simulation. We can graph the results as well. We change to a 25 year prediction time to see how the system evolves over a longer time period. When we graph the data this time we see the temperature system stabilizes about 15 years out. Satisfied with our monthly simulation, we decide to do an hourly simulation. Because this is computationally intensive, we decide to do it for only one year. The program asks for a secondary confirmation before we start. Because it takes so long, for this demo we cancel the process. We perform our monthly simulation again to retrieve our prior results. The monthly simulation results indicate a very high performance system. We decide to reduce our drilling to 240 feet per bore and re-perform the simulation. GLD 2010 provides designers with multiple design methodologies enabling designers to do things they could not do before. We look at the performance of the system. We switch to a longer modeling time period. Once again, this is with the reduced drilling requirements. We see the system stabilizes about 15 years out. It looks like a good design. Now that we know our loop field design, we can open up the new fluid dynamics module to optimize the piping system. 
This is our layout workspace where we can add a GHX module, which is basically a supply return runout, headering system, and boreholes. We have 10 circuits per GHX module. Each one is 240 feet deep. It's one inch pipe. We'll have a two inch supply return runout for the time being, and it's 125 feet out from the building. We hit OK, and we see the system being built before our eyes. We choose to look at the data pertaining to the design of the system. We want to look at the pipe pair information as well as the circuit information. We want to see the supply pipe and the return pipe information. And for the time being, we're going to look at the size of the pipe, the type of the pipe, and the pipe length. We can now see the design. We have our supply return runout of STR11, 125 feet long, our first circuit, 240 feet deep, our first header section, 2 inches diameter, our second circuit, etc, etc. We are now going to optimize our design so that the system can be purged properly prior to startup. To do this, we first want to look at some data for purging. We're not so interested in the type or length of the pipe, we're more interested in the flow rates, the velocities, and the pressure drop. Now we change views so we can see everything in a vertical fashion, and we switch from peak load mode to the purging mode. At this point in time, a new button opens up and we can say auto adjust the purging flow rate. This basically will ensure we achieve two feet per second flow rates in the circuits. When we hit the auto flow button, the program calculates that we need 60 gallons per minute and 39 feet of head to be overcome to achieve two feet per second in each and every circuit. This is a very powerful computational tool. However, our header sections are not achieving the two feet per second target as you can see. For this, we have to use another tool inside the program. And we'll just focus on the header section. Now we do the auto size header button. Now when I hit auto size, the program will automatically determine the optimal reducing headering system to ensure two feet per second is achieved throughout the whole system during purging. And we see it shows you where you need to reduce your headering system. We need about 60 gallons per minute, overcoming about 40 feet of head. When we look at the whole system now with the circuits, we'll see that two feet per second is achieved throughout the whole system. We now switch to peak load to see how the system will perform under operating conditions. Now we're interested in information such as the Reynolds number. We'll now choose our fluid type. We'll go to automatic entry mode and we'll choose a propylene glycol solution. Now that we have chosen our fluid, we can hit calculate and see how the system will perform. We see Reynolds numbers in the high 4000s, indicative of turbulent flow. At this point in time, we can add one or more circulation pumps to the system. On the circulation pump tab, we can review the added circulation pumps. This module offers many additional features, including the modeling of manifolds and vault systems. We can now open the Finance and CO2 module to do an annual and life cycle cost comparison between the designed geothermal system and conventional equipment. First, we can import our design. This is very useful because we can import the design with the calculated seasonal EERs and COP values. Next, we can enter parameters pertaining to the conventional equipment to which we wish to compare the geothermal system. We return to the results tab to perform the analysis. We quickly see the savings associated with the geothermal system on a variety of fronts from an annual perspective and on a life cycle cost perspective. We switch from a 25-year modeling time to a 10-year modeling time to more accurately reflect the realities of investment decisions. With this particular project, even with a 10-year net present value calculation, the geothermal system is estimated to save about $100,000.
new in GLD 2010 are a range of export options into a variety of leading building simulation and architectural tools, including AutoCAD, IDF file export into the Train Trace and eQuest programs, and APS file export into the IES virtual environment. This concludes the short demo on some of the new features in GLD 2010. Contact us for more information. Thank you.